As if the Rebel 300 and 1100 weren't enough, we're on the way to potentially complete the trifecta and pick up a Rebel 500. But the issue is, it's wrecked. So we're going to go check it out and see if it's actually worth getting to do a rebuild series. But we're in a race against time, so we got to get on the road. Perfect. Perfect. Welcome back to Life of Birch. This is Birch, and uh, yeah, I'll explain, but like I said, we're in a race against time to get to the bank to get some money out and get there in time. We got a backpack full of tools in case we need to fix this thing to get on the road. We have a riding jacket and a helmet, and I think that should be all that we need, fingers crossed. So as you guys know, if you've seen the channel before, I just have this knack for finding really good deals on bikes, and I don't know how I do it, and by I don't know how I do it, I mean I'm literally obsessed with checking Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist multiple times a day, just waiting for good deals to pop up so that you know, I can either get a bike to flip and make some money off of it or get a bike and keep it or if I'm just getting it to make review videos or whatever. So last night, late at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night probably, I was on Facebook Marketplace like I always am. Side note, do not film and drive. I'm a bad example. But yeah, so I was on Facebook Marketplace at like 11 o'clock at night and I have it set up to give me notifications anytime anything Honda Rebel, Honda Rebel? Honda Rebel related pops up so that I can be the first one to see it. So I get on Facebook and I have a notification for something Honda Rebel related. I check and I see a Honda Rebel for and I'm like, all right, it's probably like a Rebel 300 or whatever. We don't need another 300. And then I look and it's a 2021 ABS SE model. So that's the one that has all the fancy stuff like the diamond stitch seat and the headlight cowl already on there and the blacked out forks and blah, 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 blah. They retail for, I think, 6,800 bucks plus like all the dealer fees and freight and all that kind of crap. And he had it listed for and I'm like, all right, what's wrong with it? So I click on it and I look and it's been in a wreck. It got crashed at like 25 miles per hour and the damage, I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but the tank is super dented in, the exhaust is scratched. Uh, there's some stuff bent up, the handlebars are crooked. But in my head, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I could fix that for, I don't know, like 500 to $1,000 tops if it is how it looks in the pictures. So I messaged him because it was late at night. He just posted it a few hours ago. It seems like I was the first one to message him and I'm on my way to go look at it now. What's the worst that happens? You know, it's an hour and a half away. I go out there, check it out, and I don't want it. I'm just hoping that it's not worse than it looks. I'm hoping that the handlebars being crooked are just the handlebars and not the actual forks because that could be a serious deal breaker. But the plan is I'm going to go pick up this bike as long as it looks good and do like a rebuild series on the channel. And then I don't know if I'm going to do a giveaway for it on the channel, like a raffle, or if I'm going to do like a Patreon giveaway or what. My fingers are cramping holding this phone. So we're headed to the bank right now. We're just a couple minutes away. Got to pick up the cash. Ashola, and then we're headed to Manassas, Virginia to pick this thing up. And by pick this thing up, I mean hopefully pick it up and hopefully it's not a turd, so stay tuned for that. All right, we got the money in hand. I'm not gonna say how much it is. I forget if I got too excited earlier and said it, but if I did, I'm gonna bleep it out because I'm not gonna tell you how much he's asking for it. Just know that it's a really, really good deal. And when we look at the bike, we'll kind of check out the condition of it and I'll see what you guys would actually pay for it to see if it's even worth it and all that kind of good stuff. So I have the money and I'm realizing I left out a few key details. I said we're in a rush against time because it is four o'clock Wow, four o'clock on the dot. So I'm a little bit less stressed out now. Four o'clock on the dot and it's an hour and a half away and we're supposed to meet him at 5.30. So I was really worried we were gonna run out of time, but we are right on time. So that's a good thing. And then the other thing I forgot to mention is the tools that I have. I told you that I had the tools, but I don't think I included the part where we have to get it out of his driveway today. He was like, listen, if you're buying it today, you gotta take it today. You're gonna need a trailer, so you need to get it. And I don't have anybody that could come up with me. I checked with everybody. My girlfriend's working. So we gotta get that bike out of there today. So if we're buying Buying it, I have tools and we're gonna have to get it roadworthy enough to ride it home. And then I guess I have my girlfriend bring me back for my car. We'll see how that plays out. I'm just worried about getting there. So uh, all that's left to do is a quick little. And here she is, 2021 Honda Rebel SE edition. And uh, I'm kind of surveying some of the damage here. I was in front of their house checking it out and now I'm doing a quick little test ride. And uh, I'll kind of give you guys a walkthrough of all of the damage so we can figure out if this is worth it or not. And you guys can let me know how much you guys would spend on it. All right, so the right side is the side that took all of the damage. As you can tell, I'm sure the biggest damage here is the tank. And by biggest, I mean the most expensive. So I looked up tanks and they're like 530 to 550 bucks, if I'm remembering correctly. It's definitely punched in. Oh, I didn't even look inside of the tank. I didn't think about that. Oh, what am I thinking? You can't see anything. But yeah, so the tank is punched in. That's a thing that happens with all of these Rebels just because of the way that the handlebars are set up. And I'll show you guys right here. When you get in an accident, they have rubber bushings down here and the bar if they get hit, they're really prone to turning, and then you can see the controls just smack right into it. And it looks like that one smacked the controls. It also smacked that. I am realizing, did I 
test out the I did not test out the hazard lights yet because that's the button that it looks like smacked the hardest yeah hazards work so that's awesome so it looks like even though it's smacked all of these are fine because I've already obviously started the bike up so that I could ride it I just test out the hazards and yeah like I said I had to start it up so those other buttons obviously work all right so actually let's get back on the bike so I can show you the other main damage I'm sure you guys can tell the bars are super super crooked and I was doing my best to try and figure out if the forks were bent or if it's just the bars I'm 99% confident that it's just the bars and I really hope it is because if the forks are bent that would definitely blow the deal for me but it just looks like the bars are crooked and I'll say that it should be a pretty easy fix because I was talking to the guy about it and one of the flaws with these bikes or I don't know if I should say flaw just one of the design aspects of it is they have rubber bushings there so like I was saying if it falls and the bars hit it's really easy for the bars to shift because it's not solid mounted and they do that to kind of reduce some of the vibration in the bars when you're riding but then as a side effect of it you know like I said the bars just get out of whack so I think all we have to do for that is just loosen these bolts down here and that'll kind of like loosen the tension on the rubber mounts and then we can straighten the bars out and tighten them back down so we should be good there so fingers crossed that it's just the bars and not the forks themselves let's stand at an angle so you guys can see I'm pretty sure that we're good with the forks fingers crossed and then moving down the line in kind of order of most importance you can see that this part took lots of the impact also so the foot peg here is bent the spring doesn't really spring it back it's all mangled whatever and then the brake pedal is definitely smashed up and uh, bent back so that's one of the main issues I thought it was just bent and when I just started riding it it's like really hard for the rear brakes to engage so I'm hoping that there's just some kind of like weird tension on it somewhere because of it being bent and that once we get a new one of these put on there and a new spring it'll be fine but I guess worst case scenario maybe we'll have to bleed the brakes or something like that but again knock on wood it should be fine oh yeah and this little step plate down here is uh, scratched up too but that's not a huge deal the engine runs strong still from what I can tell the coolant level was right the oil level was right brake fluid level was right it's not leaking it's not dripping so mechanically and frame wise it is sound from what I can tell now aside from that stuff it's really just cosmetic stuff that we have to worry about you can see the exhaust is scratched right here and it's definitely bent in some the bright side is you guys know I put the shorty GP on my rebel 500 and it sounded great and it's only like 60 or 70 bucks so that should be a pretty cheap fix there I hope unless we decide to go with a two brothers exhaust in which case it might not be but who knows we'll see and then for other cosmetic stuff you can see up here took a brunt of it also so the lever is scratched up there the master cylinder scratched there these little rubber covers are shredded the cables underneath them the throttle cables are fine but you know it's just a cosmetic damage I guess we'd have to decide if we want to swap that out for something that looks nicer or not and then we got some scratches on the mirror which is also knocked loose not a big deal got a scratched grip there also not a big deal and then we got a little teeny tiny scuff here on the cowl which honestly I didn't even notice until right now so overall I feel like it's not in terrible shape it's just that the tank is going to cost a lot we'll have to figure out the brakes and we got to keep our fingers crossed that the forks aren't bent so let's finish taking it around the block for our little test ride and we'll kind of talk numbers because I have already looked up the parts that I could see that were damaged so we'll kind of talk numbers how much it should cost to fix it and then see how it rides and then I'll kind of come to you guys for a verdict as to whether or not we should get this thing do a rebuild series maybe do a giveaway on patreon or a giveaway on the channel is this scratched uh, no that's just grease or something okay cool anyway let's go for a quick ride like I said and we'll run the numbers and see if it sounds like it's worth it to get <laughs> See, she purrs like a kitten. You can definitely see how freaking crooked the bars are, though. All right, let's get out of here, and we're off. Shift in. Ooh, that was a little bit of a clunky shift, but that was definitely my bad, not the Rebel's problem. All right, so let's talk to you. This is so weird banking with the bars turned like that, and obviously I don't know where I'm going because it's a dead end. But anyway, let's dive into the numbers. Uh, for one thing, this bike only has 575 miles, so that's awesome. It's not like it's been used and abused for thousands and thousands of miles and then wrecked. It's literally a brand new bike, so the low mileage is definitely, definitely a plus. The main thing is the tank, like I said. I looked that up last night, and that's about 500 to $550 for a brand new OEM tank. And then what else? So the bars, assuming that I can just straighten them out, those should be fine. The bars themselves don't look bent. The forks don't look bent. I should just be able to straighten those out. Oh, that's a stop sign. This looks like a roundabout. I need to pay friggin' attention. So yeah, this will either be free or it'll end up being hundreds of dollars for new forks, but we're gonna lean towards the free side and hope that that's the case. As far as down here, I looked up the um, brake pedal and then this little foot thing. And I think between both of them, it was under 40 bucks. So we should only be around, what is that, like 600 bucks? 
right now. And then for the exhaust, like I said, probably like 70 bucks for the Shorty GP. The brake lever that's all scratched up, that's going to be free because we already got some levers for Nina. So we'll just throw some stock levers back on here unless we decide to do some adjustable ones, in which case that's probably 30 bucks. The mirrors, we'll probably just get like some bar end mirrors or something like that. We'll say 25 bucks off Amazon. The grip is scratched, so we'll probably throw like some Vans grips on there. I want to say 20 bucks. So what's the total at now? 745. Why have I been at this intersection before? Am I having deja vu or have I been to this area before? Oh yeah, and I did notice that it seems like it could use some adjusting of the clutch lever. Try to do it by hand, but it's too tight. But you can see it's a little loose there, so we'll have to tighten that up. Anyway, enough ADD. So our total's at like 745 so far, and am I forgetting anything else? Um, let's just say for like miscellaneous costs, like if we end up having to replace the throttle cables or like anything else like that, we'll just say miscellaneous costs 55 bucks, which brings our total to about 800 bucks to fix this. Now, obviously we won't have to spend any money on labor costs, which would be kind of like the detrimental part to anybody else buying this because, you know, shops charge what, like $150, $200 an hour or something like that. So that would be a pretty make or break for anybody else, but we're just going to go full send and rebuild this thing in the parking lot of my condo. So we don't have to worry about labor costs. So we'll say roughly $800 to fix this. Now this bike retails for, I want to say, um, I had to look over my shoulder because it's freaking mirror. I keep forgetting. I want to say that the SE model retails for 6,800. So you guys let me know, does it seem like this thing is worth buying? And if so, for a $6,800 bike and $800 worth of stuff that we need to fix and all of our time spent fixing it, what do you think is a good deal on this bike? All right, I'm realizing that I have no idea where I am because I'm just like driving around aimlessly, not paying attention to the road and talking to you guys and I don't know the area. So let's go ahead and pull in here and we'll wrap things up and then I'll whip out the GPS to figure out how the heck to get back. Oh, see, I started using the rear brake and it, it doesn't want to do it. All right, so there is the inaugural test ride of potentially our new Rebel 500 SE. We'll end it there. I'm going to head back and kind of talk to him a little bit more, make my decision as to whether or not we should pick this up, but I really think that it could make a great giveaway bike slash Patreon bike. Definitely check out the Patreon if you haven't already because they also get early access. So by the time that this video comes out, Patreon will already know whether or not I bought it. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Peace. Oh, so basic. Hope you play this. Damn, I prayed it. Nice song, yeah. I be Candace, all souls fake it, pay those ay, placements, ay, ay. And I'm still waiting on the brighter day. It's been a minute, been rough many times more. And I'm kicking rocks to a sky of gray, praying hard talk to me for I'm done for.